Hello, I'm Nick Furis, and welcome to our retrospective of Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew's first pastoral visit to the United States. October 19, 1997 was a special day for the six million Orthodox faithful living in this country. His All Holiness, Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew, arrived at Andrews Air Force Base for his first pastoral visit to America since his enthronement in 1991. The United States officially welcomed His All Holiness to the nation's capital, according him honors reserved for heads of state and for good reason. His All Holiness is the 270th successor to the Apostle Andrew and the spiritual leader of more than 300 million Orthodox Christians around the globe. The purpose of his trip was twofold. It was a pastoral visit to the Orthodox flock in America, but it was also an introduction to the American public of the man who leads worldwide Orthodoxy into the next millennium. He was born in 1940 on the Aegean island of Vimbros. He studied at the renowned theological school of Halki, and upon his graduation was ordained a deacon in 1961. After fulfilling his military obligations in the Turkish Army Reserve, he pursued postgraduate studies in Rome, where he received his doctorate in canon law. He then pursued further studies at the Ecumenical Institute in Bosse, Switzerland, and the University of Munich specializing in ecclesiastical law. When he returned to Constantinople, he was ordained to the priesthood in 1969. Four years later, he was consecrated a bishop and named Metropolitan of Philadelphia. He served as the director of the patriarchal office for 19 years. He was enthroned as the Metropolitan of Chalkidon in 1990, the year when he accompanied the late Patriarch Demetrius on his historic visit to the United States as his chief advisor and administrator. Metropolitan Bartholomew was unanimously elected and subsequently enthroned as Ecumenical Patriarch in 1991. Upon his arrival in Washington, Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew was welcomed by His Eminence Archbishop Spiridon of America, the U.S. Chief of Protocol Mary Mel French, cabinet members, the Synod of Bishops of the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America, ambassadors, other Orthodox bishops, ecumenical leaders, senators, members of Congress, clergy, and many Orthodox faithful from the area. His All Holiness was escorted by Metropolitans of the Holy Synod, Joachim of Chalkidon, Pandeleimon of Tiroloi, and Iakovos of Laodikia. The importance of Patriarch Bartholomew's visit was highlighted by the presence of numerous media representatives at the scene of the official welcome. Scores of print journalists, as well as television crews from CBS, Reuters, CNN, and Greek television networks were present, while major newspapers including the Washington Post, the New York Times, USA Today, and the Los Angeles Times previewed his visit in their Sunday morning editions. Today is a great day in the life of the Orthodox Church, in the life of this nation, and the life of the Greek Orthodox faithful who live in this great nation. For today is the day when the ecumenical patriarch crosses the bridges of history and culture and thereby reveals the true ecumenicity of orthodoxy. It is a day on which a man of God brings the message of God's peace to a nation that strives to bring peace to the rest of the world. We look forward to the coming days when we shall have occasion to experience once more the rich diversity of America as we journey through her brilliant landscapes. And it is with fatherly joy that we commence our voyage across this great land a land that has provided fertile ground for the 75 years of the extraordinary growth of our beloved Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America. It is truly a blessing for us to come to America in the name of the Lord. May the grace and peace and infinite mercy of God make all our days to be as this day, a day for all of us to rejoice and be glad in. And may he pour his abundant blessings upon President Clinton, the honorable government of this country, and the beloved people of these United States.
Thank you. Following his address, the Ecumenical Patriarch proceeded to the waiting faithful, offering them warm greetings before departing by motorcade for the doxology at Saints Constantine and Helen Greek Orthodox Church. It is the joy of celebrating the 75th anniversary of the Archdiocese, but the reach out of the Ecumenical Patriarch in the English language to all of Orthodox in this world and to the Americans uh, who have come out to celebrate, and as we well saw, the United States government with the United States flag, the ecumenical flag, it's reaching out and celebrating orthodoxy in America. We have our roots, and a 21st century is a century of orthodoxy. The ecumenical patriarch, the 270th successor to St. Andrew, is what links us to our orthodox faith. The young people in America, for the first time, many of them get to see uh, what orthodoxy is all about. We're more than just a church in the United States now, but we're part of the greater body of Christ. I see the beginning of a very historic moment for the whole Christian family in the United States, not just for the Orthodox. Uh, His All Holiness Patriarch Bartholomew has made a commitment to work in the way of promoting greater understanding and eventual unity in the Christian family. A standing room only crowd filled the church and overflowed outside under a tent in the adjacent parking lot where a large screen monitor was set up. The enthusiastic welcome exhibited by the faithful on the first day of the visit was the best possible beginning to this extraordinary pilgrimage. During a very emotional visit to the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum, Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew acknowledged that Christians in the Holocaust era failed to apply the teachings of their faith to their daily lives and remained silent in the face of evil. The Ecumenical Patriarch began his visit greeted by several leaders of the American Jewish community, including Rabbi Arthur Schneier and Rabbi James Rudin, who escorted him on the tour of the exhibits. I believe that uh, his uh, All Holiness's visit um, actually states the need for moral leadership uh, in a world of inhumanity. And uh, in this respect, uh, His All Holiness and I chaired a very important conference uh, in Istanbul on peace and tolerance in 1994, uh, trying to put an end to that bloody war in Yugoslavia. And um, there was a very important statement that came out of that conference. A crime perpetrated in the name of religion is the greatest crime against religion. Of particular interest was the panel in the Rescuers exhibit that described the efforts of non-Jews in Europe who in many cases gave up their own lives to help their Jewish neighbors survive the Holocaust. Among these was a list of more than 200 names of Greek Orthodox Christians who rescued Greek Jews during the Nazi occupation of Greece. One of these righteous Gentiles was Bishop Chrysostomos of Zakynthos, who warned the Jews on the island to flee to the hills. When he was asked to submit a list of Jews to the Nazis, he wrote down only his name. Joining the Ecumenical Patriarch at the museum was Dr. Yolanda Willis, who was saved by a Greek Orthodox family in Crete, where she was born. The righteous Greeks who sheltered us are too many to name here. Last night, I counted over 43 in my rescue alone. Let me tell you about just two of them a humble baker and his wife, who took me in and pretended I was their goddaughter. And when my family was in trouble, my so-called godparents hid them also. When they were discovered to have harbored Jews, 
they became fugitives. And so it was that the Greek Orthodox girl, the baker's five-year-old daughter, spent the last six months of the Nazi occupation as a hidden child for me, like me. We boldly proclaim to all, to our own spiritual children and to our brothers and sisters in the entire Ecumeni, that silence in the face of injustice, silence in the shadows of helpless suffering, Silence in the darkness of Auschwitz's bitter night will never again be allowed. The rescuers of Jews and others from the fires of evil on earth overcame the bitter snare of fear and faithlessness, self-interest and hatred. They overcame evil with good. All who died in the Holocaust are martyrs witnesses that point the way for us to God's love. Eonia imnimi afton. May their memory be eternal. The magnificent National Cathedral was the site of an ecumenical doxology hosted by the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church, Edmund Browning. The doxology included participants from the Orthodox, Episcopalian, Lutheran, and Methodist churches, as well as the Jewish and Muslim faiths. The light that inspired the builders of the great cathedrals, among which this national cathedral most certainly ranks, is the inner light that seeks expression in the outer world of human experience. Too often in the contemporary human condition, this light is placed under a bushel, or even worse, extinguished through coercion and persecution the failure of political expediency, the vanity of purely material gain, the alienation of individuals from society and whole societies from the individual, all testify to the eclipse of our natural and God-given powers as living icons created in the image and according to the likeness of God. After departing from the cathedral, His All Holiness relaxed his official schedule and made an unannounced stop to Martha's Table, a facility that serves homeless mothers and children. The ecumenical patriarch spent some time surrounded by the exuberant children who took instantly to this loving, grandfatherly figure. It was yet another expression of the ecumenical patriarch's love for humanity a love that spurs him in the pursuit of global peace and environmental preservation. The day ended with a tour and reception at the Library of Congress, hosted by librarian Dr. James Billington, political analyst George Stephanopoulos, and New York financier Alexander Papamarku. On hand to honor His All Holiness were a number of senators, political commentators, ambassadors, and church leaders. He's an extraordinarily important uh, religious leader in the world. And my sense is that uh, these kinds of visits that, that cross the divisions and, and, and bring us together are exceedingly important. And he is representative, indeed, of one of the oldest uh, and most respected of our religious entities in the world. So we welcome him. We're very honored to have him. The Patriarch is right now the head of a vibrant, growing church all around the world. And I think it's important, and I think it's, it's especially, I feel especially privileged to have the chance to have him introduced uh, to Washington, which is obviously a, a city which makes a difference all over the world. The Honorable Strom. His All Holiness accepted the highest honor of the U.S. Congress, the Congressional Gold Medal, in an impressive ceremony held under the vast dome of the Capitol building.
He joined a very select company of great figures that include George Washington, Winston Churchill, and Mother Teresa. Hundreds of faithful attended the event in the rotunda to witness top congressional leaders honor ecumenical patriarch Bartholomew for his achievements in raising awareness of environmental and human rights issues and promoting racial harmony and international understanding. Be it enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled. The Congress finds that ecumenical patriarch Bartholomew is a spiritual leader of nearly 300 million Orthodox Christians around the world and millions of Orthodox Christians in America, and is recognized in the United States and abroad as a leader in the quest for world peace, respect for the Earth's environment, and greater religious understanding. The extraordinary efforts of ecumenical patriarch Bartholomew continue to bring people of all faiths closer together in America and around the world. The President is authorized to present, on behalf of the Congress, a gold medal of appropriate design to ecumenical patriarch Bartholomew in recognition of his outstanding and enduring contributions to religious understanding and peace. Across the way here in the Great Rotunda, is a replica of the Magna Carta, which is the oldest secular document from which we can claim our direct roots of freedom, the right of those who pay taxes to have control over those to whom they give the money, the right of all people to insist that the king is beneath the law. And yet that, 1215 AD, is relatively new compared to the church. And in our Declaration of Independence, you will find that we do reach back to the core spiritual nature. We do say we hold these truths to be self-evident, that we are endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights. And so in the very heart of our secular system, reaching back beyond even the Magna Carta, we recognize the importance of age-old, timeless truths. Because of that, in this period after the collapse of the Soviet Empire, as America seeks its duty and tries to understand its role, we increasingly are aware of and committed to the cause of religious liberty. If we believe our rights come from our Creator, then we have an absolute obligation to remind people everywhere that it is not humans they undermine when they violate religious liberty, it is the will of God. This commitment to the ideals of religious liberty is the cornerstone of American democracy and the genius of American diversity. It is no wonder that Orthodox Christian peoples from the, from the world over have found a welcome reception and secure haven in these United States, especially when you consider the persecution endured in this century. We thank you, the American people, for helping preserve the Orthodox faith under communism. Indeed, it is you who should be receiving this medal, not we. We pledge to continue to work with you to bring peace and democracy to the world and ensure the hu that human rights and religious freedom prevail around the globe. In the evening, the Ecumenical Patriarch attended a session of the first Orthodox Muslim Dialogue in America at the world-famous Georgetown University. Of the Christ. Thank you. Jesus Christ's example. Uh, in his life on earth, who accepted everybody in his entourage, in his friendship, is the best response to your question. Later, the of nation's course, second course. oldest Catholic university bestowed upon His All Holiness an honorary degree, a doctorate in law, presented by the school's president, the Reverend Leo J. O'Donovan. 
John Paul II has written that he considered it one of the first duties of his pontificate to renew personal contact with Demetrios, successor to Athenagoras. At their first meeting in 1979, they announced the establishment of a theological dialogue between the churches. In recent years, John Paul and Bartholomew have continued to foster hope of full communion between East and West. Our heart is opposed to the specter of an everlasting separation. Our heart requires that we seek again our common foundations and the original starting point that we share, so that retrospectively we can discover the point and the reasons for our divergence that led to separate courses and be able, by lifting blame, to proceed thereafter on the same road leading to the same common goal. The day concluded with a banquet at the historic Union Station, hosted by AHEPA, the American Hellenic Educational Progressive Association. During the dinner, His All Holiness received the Socrates Award. His All Holiness Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew celebrated the sixth anniversary of his election to the Ecumenical Throne during a divine liturgy at St. Sophia Greek Orthodox Cathedral. During his homily, His All Holiness stated that the liturgy is more than just a single service. It is not an opportunity for a weekly encounter on the basis of purely social or personal relationships. Participation in this mystery sanctifies the world and fills us with divine grace. After the liturgy, the patriarchal party attended an anniversary luncheon hosted by Archbishop Spiridon of America at the historic Blair House. The same afternoon, His All Holiness videotaped an interview for World View, a news program airing on CNN International. The visit to the nation's capital would not have been complete without a meeting with President Bill Clinton at the White House. The president expressed concern over religious persecution and emphasized his united stand with the ecumenical patriarch on this issue. The president also discussed his global warming plan, as well as his recent initiative on eliminating tensions in Greek-Turkish relations and the resolution of the Cyprus issue. His All Holiness briefed the president about actions he has taken to bring about the cleanup of the Black Sea and the Danube River in Europe. In an age when religious tolerance is at the forefront of international political agendas, the ecumenical patriarch spoke of the oppression and intimidation under which the patriarchate and the remaining Orthodox faithful live in Turkey. In this vein, His All Holiness raised the issue of the reopening of the Halki Theological School, explaining the importance of the school to the existence of the Mother Church. While at the White House, the ecumenical patriarch also paid a reciprocal visit to First Lady Hillary Rodham Clinton, who had visited the Fanar when she traveled to Turkey in March of 1996 with her daughter, Chelsea. Following the meeting with Mrs. Clinton, the ecumenical patriarch and Archbishop Spiridon entered the East Room of the White House, where invited guests waited to hear their comments. I have seen many exciting events occur here in the White House since my husband has been president and we have been privileged to live here. Uh, but I'm not sure I've ever seen one stir as much excitement among the staff here in the White House complex and around the country. And I think that that excitement is not only because of the visit uh, and the excitement that it raises um, by the patriarch to the Greek Orthodox community, but because the person who visits us is a great world leader who can inspire every American far beyond the reach of the Orthodox community. The White House is indeed a resplendent historic and cultural treasure that signifies to the world the very essence of democracy. People from all over the world come and see this symbol of hope, a house for all the people. Though we receive far fewer visitors at the home of the Ecumenical Patriarchate, the Mother Church is also a house for all people. 
Through its various ministries, the Ecumenical Patriarchate offers to the entire world the historical, cultural, and spiritual treasure reverently protected by the Mother Church of Orthodox Christianity. It is truly an ecumenical, worldwide ministry, embracing all of the children of God with much paternal love. The day of high-level political contacts concluded at the State Department, where the Secretary of State, Madeleine Albright, hosted a reception in honor of the ecumenical patriarch. This is your first visit to the United States as ecumenical patriarch, but your message has deep resonance here. For our citizens, although of many faiths, have, are joined in the conviction that all people should have the right to choose, proclaim, and practice their religion free from harassment and free from fear. We also believe that religion should be one of the forces that bring people together rather than drive them apart. And we have been enriched beyond measure by those among us who have had the courage and grace to live their life in faith. Your All Holiness, you have pointed to our common concern for the future of the planet we share and called each of us to shoulder the burden of his or her own responsibility and not to remain silent. Our fervent hope is that our pilgrimage to America, our presence in your distinguished company this evening, will be cause for an awakening of the historical, religious, and cultural significance of the civilizations of the East. During this time of transition, we seek to promote absolute values of freedom and tolerance. We must not accept the imposition of cultural norms alien to peoples whose roots are, in many cases, hundreds, even thousands of years deeper than those who seek to recreate them in their own image. Throughout Eastern Europe, Orthodox Christianity is more than a religion. It is a way of life rooted in the experience of thousands of years of history. Whatever damage was incurred during the atheistic governments of the recent past does not and cannot invalidate that history. Let us not give in to easy solutions, nor to the desire to remake the world in our image. Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew concluded his visit to the nation's capital with a breakfast at the residence of Vice President Al Gore. I do not remember a visit to the United States that has gone so well as this visit has, said the Vice President in his welcoming remarks to more than 500 persons gathered under a large tent on the grounds of the U.S. Naval Observatory a few yards from his home. Your All Holiness, your eloquent teachings on the sanctity of the earth have won you the affectionate and respectful title of the Green Patriarch and have inspired many of us in our work on the environment. So as someone who has been called the ozone man, I'm thrilled to welcome the Green Patriarch. <laughs> There's no telling what the two of us can cook up together. <laughs> and you know, uh, yesterday, President Clinton and I announced for the first time in our nation's history a serious plan to confront the challenge of global warming, one of the greatest challenges uh, now facing the world, one that will receive increasing attention as we near the turn of the century and will shortly begin this new century. And Your All Holiness, it was comforting and encouraging to have you here in our nation and our capital city at that historic moment because uh, the President, as you know, quoted you in his uh, historic speech. And there are those, including some who've expressed disagreement with the specific policies that we are announcing who 
think that our concern for the environment is a, an idealistic indulgence or a passing uh, fad. I think those who have that belief have their confidence shaken a little bit when the 270th successor to the Apostle Andrew and the spiritual leader of 300 million people teaches, as you have so eloquently said, the world, and I'm quoting from your words, the world is not meant to be used by humans for their own purpose, but is the means whereby humans come into relationship with God. We have together dedicated ourselves to a cause of singular importance to the human family, the protection of the environment. We deeply appreciate your unwearing commitment to ecological responsibility. Your support and patronage of our own efforts, especially the recent symposium on the Black Sea, have been of invaluable assistance. The Orthodox faith has much to contribute to the emerging dialogue between modern, technologically driven man and the environment in which he lives. We look forward to the Environmental Symposium in Santa Barbara, California in a few days as another opportunity to contribute to this ever-expanding dialogue. At the conclusion of his official visit to the nation's capital, Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew was escorted by an impressive motorcade to the next stop in his itinerary. His destination was Baltimore, Maryland, where he noted the diversity of the city's Orthodox communities, calling them full partners in the tapestry woven from rich, diverse religious, ethnic, and social composites. The city of Baltimore received His All Holiness with a warm embrace. This is the greatest day in my life and the greatest day in the life of our community because our Father has come to be with His children. When we heard the great news that He was going to visit Baltimore in the cathedral, preparations began immediately. For seven months, it's been day and night focused on this time here. Governor Paris Clendenin, Senators Paul Sarbanes and Barbara Mikulski, Mayor Kurt Schmoke, and Cardinal Keeler joined the local communities in welcoming His All Holiness at the Greek Orthodox Cathedral of the Annunciation. Following the Pan-Orthodox Doxology, Mayor Kurt Schmoke hosted a tribute for Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew at City Hall. The mayor had previously met His All Holiness at a recent International Habitat Conference in Istanbul, where he had represented President Bill Clinton. During the brief ceremony, the Ecumenical Patriarch was proclaimed an honorary citizen of Baltimore. The Ecumenical Patriarch attended another reception hosted by IOCC, the International Orthodox Christian Charities, a humanitarian organization. The largest public event in honor of His All Holiness was a luncheon at the Baltimore Convention Center, where more than 2,000 people watched the performance by Pan-Orthodox dance troops and listened to an address by the Ecumenical Patriarch. The majestic Basilica of the National Shrine of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary was the site of a service of prayer and praise. It was the first time that an ecumenical patriarch had preached at a Roman Catholic Church in the United States. As we approach the close of this century, we are confronted both by the legacy of our past and the promise of the future, a new opportunity for spiritual growth. Entering the third millennium of Christianity, the shadows of secular materialism shroud the landscape of faith. The allure of surfaces, illusions, and appearances 
obscures the truth of the profound mystery of the human person. There are many today who take the surface for the truth and worship mere images. Such images are never spiritually satisfying and are easily exhausted. As you know, many people who seek after spirituality are ultimately deceived and led astray, even into perilous situation. All Christians have a responsibility to their brothers and sisters. We who strive to live a spiritual life, a life in the Holy Spirit, must reach out to all our brethren and lead them by the hand. We must lead them back to the well springs of spirituality. The Ecumenical Patriarch's public schedule in Baltimore concluded with a reception at the Walters Art Gallery and a dinner at Cardinal Keeler's residence with members of the Catholic Orthodox Dialogue Commission. An enthusiastic crowd of several hundred faithful endured the cold weather and strong winds to greet Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew at New York's LaGuardia Airport. His All Holiness was welcomed by the Mayor of New York City, Rudy Giuliani, Archbishop Spiridon of America, former Archbishop Iakovos, the great benefactor of the Ecumenical Patriarchate, Panayotis Agelopoulos, and representatives of all local Orthodox churches. In his greeting, the Ecumenical Patriarch called his visit to the United States a sacramental sign of the oneness that is shared among the 300 million Orthodox worldwide. The Ecumenical Patriarch's first full day in New York began with a breakfast hosted by the Greek Orthodox Young Adult League. As parish council members, Young Adult League members, teachers of Sunday school, advisors of Goya, we are a dynamic and vital part of our Orthodox Church. Your Old Holiness, by honoring us with your presence here today at this breakfast, you have shown us fatherly love and affection, which makes us appreciate much more so our integral part in our church. In a warm and loving address, His All Holiness imparted fatherly advice to the young adults, urging them that the time is now for you to take on leadership roles within the church. Be a voice for your fellow men, be a voice of Christ, be a voice for the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese, be a voice for the great Church of Christ, our ecumenical patriarchate to the world. You can and must bring out all which is good in God's creation, for it is indeed good. Be good stewards of God's creation, the earth, the Church and our nations, proclaiming in all things and to all people the saving message of Christ our God. It's a very tricky age and one I think that uh, we cannot ignore. Our, our young adults are going away to college, they are being influenced by many uh, temptations that are out there and it is important for us and especially the Mother Church and the Archdiocese of America to, to keep our contact with them so that they never feel forgotten. So when they are called then back to the church or ready to be received, they know that they were never forgotten and always loved for. The headquarters of the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese was the next stop in the Ecumenical Patriarch's visit. On behalf of the people of the city of New York, I want to extend the warmest welcome to His All Holiness. And I'd like to thank him for bringing a voice of wisdom and spirituality to the people of the city of New York, America, and the world. When a great spiritual leader like His All Holiness comes to New York City, I believe it brings a special blessing on the city of New York. In honor of his visit here, his gracing us with his presence, and the blessings that he brings us, and in honor of the 75th anniversary of the Greek Archdiocese of America, we are going to unveil a street sign in his honor so that long after people can remember that he came here, he was among us, and he blessed us. We are deeply moved to be in this great and gracious city, the capital of the world, that is etched in the imagination of every person 
on the face of the earth. Here, the yearning of humanity for prosperity and advancement takes on tangible form in this place and in this land, a country of democratic freedoms and boundless economic opportunity. A little earlier, His All Holiness had unveiled a commemorative plaque celebrating the 75th anniversary of the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese in the New World. Because of the unique gifts of youth and spirituality and energy and commitment that His All Holiness brings to his ministry, it gives us great hope and great anticipation that we'll move together with him and with all of Christ's people, people toward that unity for which Christ prayed. By midday, His All Holiness was on his way to preside at an ecumenical service at the National Council of Churches of Christ, where he was welcomed by local area Christian clergy and faithful and the Reverend Joan Campbell, General Secretary of the NCC. Orthodoxy is vital to the ecumenical movement because orthodoxy keeps the ecumenical movement faithful. Without them, we would be very impoverished. And I think, with humility, I would say, the orthodox need the ecumenical movement as well. We're each enriched by the presence of the other. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate, and he suffered and was buried. On the third day, he rose according to the scripture. After the customary exchange of gifts, His All Holiness made a strong statement on the proselytism of traditionally orthodox populations by Western missionaries. In lands where the Orthodox Church is recovering from decades of persecution, a new threat to the Orthodox faith has appeared. Many Protestant missionaries from the West, whose voices were not heard during the decades of oppression, have come not to lend support, but to convert Orthodox believers. Orthodox who had suffered for generations had expected the prayers, the support, and the encouragement of their ecumenical partners. Sadly, they have been treated like the servant who is tortured by another servant who was himself treated with mercy by his master. The good which has been done by some of our partners has been overshadowed by the evil of others. These so-called missionaries claim to be Christians but they behave as wolves in sheep's clothing. 300 million Orthodox Christians seek the very guarantees of love and freedom that our sister churches have enjoyed in the name of religious freedom. We ask for your love and understanding as we seek to rebuild the house that was shattered by active governmental persecution for many decades. Δεύτε προσκυνήσομε και προσπέσομε αυτό Χριστό το Βασιλεί και Θεό ημών. Ευλόγη η ψυχή μου τον Κύριον, Κύριο Θεός μου εμεγαλήνθη σφόδρα. Later in the day, the ecumenical patriarch met with hierarchs, monks, priests and their families representing many Orthodox jurisdictions at the Holy Trinity Cathedral for a Pan-Orthodox Vespers. At the conclusion of Vespers and during a ceremony reminiscent of the earlier Byzantine times, a new archon, or officer of the Order of St. Andrew, was installed. Political analyst and former presidential advisor George Stephanopoulos was honored for his tireless contributions to the Greek Orthodox Church in America. When the Ecumenical Patriarch visited St. Vladimir Seminary in Scarsdale, New York, he was greeted by His Beatitude Metropolitan Theodosius of the Orthodox Church of America and Father Thomas Hopko, the Dean of the Seminary. It is with great joy that we greet is all holiness here at St. Vladimir's Seminary. We have known him for many years, even before he became the ecumenical patriarch, and we are very glad that he has his opportunity to make this visit to St. Vladimir's. And we ask his blessings upon our work and upon our endeavor to be a beacon of light of orthodoxy. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, dear brother. I am very happy to be here for the first time. I know very much about St. Vladimir. I follow the theological work which is being done here. I appreciate the contribution of this seminary to the promotion and the cultivation of the Orthodox theology and also the pastoral work uh, it does through different editions for our faithful, the English-speaking faithful here in America. And for all this, it is with a great pleasure that I find myself this morning, first time, I repeat, to St. Vladimir, and I express my gratitude for the honorary degree which will be bestowed upon me. In his speech to the faithful gathered at the seminary, the ecumenical patriarch stated that the treasure of orthodoxy is magnificent and unknown by so many as to its value and usage. We pray and we hope that its value will become known in the future to more and more people. Hundreds of faithful, mostly children from Greek Orthodox parochial schools, greeted His All Holiness at St. Demetrius Church in Jamaica. The church's center was filled to capacity with youth who cheered enthusiastically throughout a special celebration of Greek education, or Hellenic Pedia, presented to an obviously delighted ecumenical patriarch. The vast cathedral of St. John the Divine in New York City served as a stage for a benefit concert hosted by the Archons of the Order of St. Andrew, featuring international singer Nana Muscori. The liturgical highlight of the Ecumenical Patriarch's visit came at Madison Square Garden, the world's most famous sports arena, where His All Holiness celebrated a magnificent divine liturgy with the participation of 20,000 faithful. The enchanting sounds of four choirs, the beauty of the liturgy itself, and the presence of so many Orthodox Christians in one place left all the participants, as well as the Ecumenical Patriarch, in an exalted mood. E 
ευχαριστήσω μεν το Κυρίο. Σώσον ο Θεός των λαών σου και ευλογήσον την κληρονομία σου. I should like to speak to you at this moment as a father to his children, as a ecumenical patriarch I have the love and responsibility to care for your spiritual and moral development and direction, especially as it pertains to the life of the Church and to your salvation. I feel that you must continue to take on the responsibility of the legacy of the Orthodox Church as you have been called to do by virtue of your baptism. You have, in, you have inherited a very rich and spiritual heritage, one that so many others envy and admire. Do not take this legacy lightly, but cherish it like you do your mothers and fathers. Cherish it as I cherish each and every one of you. Hold tightly to the roots and soil that gave you life in Christ. Hold fast to that which nourishes you in the Orthodox faith. Do not allow yourselves to become secularized. Avoid all temptation. As the saying goes with which you are all familiar, just say no. <laughs> Go to church. Talk to your priest, talk to your bishop, talk with your parents. At all times and places, remember to love one another. In the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, love one another as the Father has loved me and I love you. The afternoon brought His All Holiness to the landmark building of Rockefeller Center for a luncheon held in his honor and hosted by the Governor of New York, George Pataki. Well, having His All Holiness in New York is a tremendous uh, honor, uh, not just for me and not just for the Orthodox community, but for all New Yorkers. And we're just honored that His All Holiness has taken the time to uh, uh, not just uh, stop in New York and have a magnificent service in Madison Square Garden this morning, but also take the time to attend this reception this afternoon. Late in the evening, a fatherly visit to the St. Michael's Home for the Aged was a heartwarming delight for His All Holiness as well as for those senior citizens who met their spiritual leader. The last day of His All Holiness's sojourn in New York City was another reminder of the respect he commands from political and religious leaders around the world. Early in the morning, the mayor of New York City, Rudy Giuliani, hosted a breakfast in honor of His All Holiness. In your unique role as the spiritual leader of 300 million Orthodox Christians throughout the world, you've used your position and your authority to bring together people of all nations and bridge the gaps of understanding between many different groups of people. Regardless of their faith or background, you've managed to reach millions and millions with your inspired message of peace, tolerance, and love. As a result, you've brought together Catholics and Muslims, Jewish and Orthodox communities in our country and throughout the world. In a world that is as complicated and as diverse as the one that we live in, there is a desperate need for the kind of spiritual leadership that you bring. We were greatly honored seven years ago when Patriarch Demetrius arrived in the United States. However, with Patriarch Bartholomew, being that he's able 
to communicate directly in the English language, uh, that is extremely much, much more effective and he's getting closer to the hearts, especially of our youth. And that is that is the future of Orthodox in the United States. Okay, I feel blessed whenever I see the Patriarch because I, out of all the things that he has done, it makes me feel happy to see him because he, he goes all around to different people and he helps people and it makes me feel happy. This was a wonderful event for New Yorkers, but for all of us because the Patriarch, when he came here, introduced New York City as the capital of the world. So for me, this was not simply the issue of New York City. It was the issue of the global community. In the afternoon, the Secretary General of the United Nations, Kofi Annan, welcomed His All Holiness to the International Organization, where the two men discussed issues of global conflict and the United Nations' efforts for peace in those areas. The Ecumenical Patriarch also visited the headquarters of the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese, where he met with staff and encouraged them to continue their valuable work for the Orthodox Church. The closing stage of his pastoral stay in the New York City area was a significant visit to the headquarters of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church of the USA. The official welcome by Metropolitan Constantine, Archbishop Anthony, Bishop Zevalod, and Bishop Biasi, and the cordial atmosphere throughout the whole evening was a reaffirmation of the close ties that connect the Greek and Ukrainian Orthodox churches. It is a connection that began over 1,000 years ago with the conversion to Christianity of Vladimir, the ruler of Kiev. Vladimir decided to adopt the Byzantine form of Christianity and decreed that all his subjects be baptized in that faith. The Slavs, through the efforts of Byzantine missionaries like Cyril and Methodius, were Christianized and civilized at the same time. Their conversion was a pivotal event in their social growth and cultural progress. That ancient connection between the ecumenical patriarchate and the Slavic churches was evident during the beautiful doxology, celebrated in Greek, Ukrainian and English, at the St. Andrew Ukrainian Orthodox Church. The service was an appropriate conclusion to the sojourn of His All Holiness in the metropolitan area. The Patriarchal Party returned to New York City to prepare for the next stage in this pastoral visit. The following day would take them to Boston, a city that has been called the Athens of America. <laughs>